Tuesday, Sunday, 3 p.m. Eastern. <clears throat> Excuse me, when we talk about guiding, and I have a lot of people ask me, what, 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 what type of guiding do we have? A, actually, it's, it's the God within us that walks side by side with us that is our guide. The, and this is what's interesting, we, many of us don't know that. We think that there's something else um, that's supposed to guide us. But it is the pure consciousness within us. Unfortunately, for uh, a lot of the civilization, they're not connected to that. They... Uh, operate more and not knowing it, but a lot of the times the God within tries to uh, communicate uh, to assist the pure consciousness with our directions. But what happens is, is that we don't hear the God within us. We don't feel the God within us. I should say we don't feel the God within us. So we kind of wing it. And we just kind of uh, rely on the ego mind, which is most of the time directing us. Now you imagine that you picture the ego mind as flailing in all different directions, totally out of control. Uh, it, it, like the Tasmanian devil, if you remember the uh, Looney Tunes cartoons, uh, similar to that is the ego mind. And it is flailing around and sending all kinds of thoughts and, and, and direction. And, and it's always in the, in the mode of, you know, you, you don't have enough, you can't have enough, you gotta get more, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. And it's throwing fears into the heart mind. And that's pretty much the ego mind. So it, it literally contains the very things that we are interested in following or directing ourselves to. And when you look at the, the past, okay, it's simply a colored memory. And the future is a flat painting. And when projected from our minds, the present moment is the best place where we can fully savor the beauty of this divine existence. And it is literally always the now, the, the, the understanding of our divine existence. When we, we talk about the now a lot, but we can't talk enough about it because of the fact that we easily slip back in to the past or the future. We're constantly wondering, you know, where are you going to be in a year? Or what's going to be happening? Um, I wonder, I wonder if this, I wonder if that. And then we go into the past and we reminisce. Picture that, because it's a lot of the civilization that does that. Why do people go into the past? Why, why are so many people going to the past? Because the reason we do is it's familiar. And it's a, it's a withdrawal or a hiding place for us. We don't look to moving forward. We more look to embracing past memories and, you know, relationships, existences, and everything. And it's comforting in a way to a lot of us to do that. But the problem with that is, is that it stunts our forward motion. It stops it. And with the God within trying to communicate with us through frequency, through vibrational frequency, and a lot of us ignoring that, uh, and not really accepting it or identifying it, we have a tendency to stay in a place that's familiar, and that's the past. See, the future we don't know. We have aspirations.
predictions of our futures, but we really don't know. And you can see how we're derailed a lot of the times. Because when you gain or understand your confidence through the heart-mind, you realize that, yes, there's an ego mind. Yes, there's a subconscious mind. But guess how you can open up the gates to the God, to the kingdom of God within? Guess how you can do that? There's no lock, you know, there's no padlock or anything. It's just that the gates seem to be sealed when you finally get to them. And when you get to the gate, uh, you go, well, how the heck am I going to get through there? So you try to, you know, jimmy it, move it, kick it, trying to figure out, crawl over it, whatever. And then you come to the realization, now if I just, if I, for myself, decide that I'm going to go with the flow, I'm, just, I'm not having any expectations, any attachments, and that's, that's kind of, it gets a little, little tenuous, a little tough for us because we're so used to holding on. We, we're not sure because it's an unknown for us to actually go with the flow and to have no attachments and no expectations. How many times in this life have any of you experienced where you've had expectations about something? You were expecting something. And you were viewing it a certain way. And you had planned something. And your expectations were never met. And you were disappointed. And you were let down. And see how that happens. Now, imagine if you approach something, and this is going totally against the belief mechanism through the civilization of this planet. Uh, it, and it, and it, because it's an unknown, see, we're always taught that you have to be able to put your hands on the wheel. you got to put your hands on that wheel, and you've got to do that. Uh, if you don't, you'll be lost. So that's why it's difficult for some people to adjust or to accept within themselves that this is not what I was taught. This is what the ego mind says. This is not what you were taught. This is not right to, to have no expectations and no attachments and to just go with the flow. Going with the flow is not like being totally oblivious or mindless. Going with the flow means is that you have the confidence within the heart mind and that you don't have any issues or concerns or expectations or attachment to the outcome of whatever it is that you're literally moving into form. A lot of us attach ourselves to an outcome or expectation of how we view things should be or what they're going to do. And instead, knowing that the confidence and knowing our true power and what we truly are, we move the energy into form. We know that the universe will deliver it. We just know that. It, it is innate once we embrace it and really understand it for ourselves. So when that happens, you have no expectations and no attachments, you're going in the flow, and it just comes in. You're not disappointed because you're just flowing with it. You have that confidence and you know, and you know what this means, you're staying out of your own way. When we impress that we must control the narrative or the outcome. We must control it. We must be able to guide and lead it so that it will fulfill our expectations and any attachments that we have applied to it. And it doesn't work that way, really, because we've been taught that way. We believe that it is a, it is a, a, a part of us. This is the way we're supposed to operate. This is the way we're supposed to do it. And it isn't. And that's why so many people get frustrated. And that's why so many people get let down. And that's why so many people get upset. Because they're expecting something. See? And they have attachments to it. What that means is, is that they hold on to it. They're hugging and gripping it. And they have those expectations. Well, you know, if you do this, this, 
expecting this, I'm expecting this, and I'm expecting that. And you may not do it consciously, it may be coming subconsciously, but nonetheless, this is what we do. So it, when we let it go, we just let it go, it detaches us. There, and anything that comes in, we know it is going to be phenomenal. That's it. We just know it. We have no expectations of it. What, what do you think the outcome is going to be? You've heard that? What do you think the outcome is going to be? What do you expect that? What do you expect to have happen? And you say, I, I really don't care. I know in, it, it will come and it will be and it will be wonderful. I just am, am fine with that. Well, what if it doesn't? What if it's a total mess? What if it's just garbage? What if it's horrible? And you say, I will be grateful for whatever the outcome is. I will be deeply grateful for whatever the outcome is. When you learn, and you each of us learn on our own, in our own direction, through our own understanding, we begin to understand the fact that we're the navigators, the masters, and that's what we're doing and experiencing. Now, if you're pushing against, if, if you take two magnets and you turn them, the polarity, and so if you turn those magnets, they're going to push against each other, so they're never, you're never going to be able to put them together. The force is too strong. And I don't know if you've ever done that. You take some pretty strong magnets and you reverse the polarity, so you turn them so that they're pushing away from each other. No matter how you try to get them to come together, you're not going to be able to do it. You're just not. They're not meant to be together. They're, they're pushing away from each other. The force is pushing away. Now, when you turn them and they snap together, they stick together. The magnetism, the, 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 the force, the power comes together and connects. A lot of the times what we are is we use ourselves is is the magnet but then the universe because we get in our own way is reverse polarity so that means that the magnet of the universe which is normally coming to you you're drawing it from what you're putting out and what energy and form you're moving so it comes and it pushes away if you can visualize that get yourself a couple of magnets so you can visualize that you, you have, you try to put them together and they just are not going to do it. They're going to shuff off to the left, to the right, and it becomes very frustrating. Now, you can reverse, reverse your polarity of your intent of moving energy into form and push the universe, the abundance, the flow away from you all the time. Now, you don't know it. You're, you're not cognizant to it, but that's what we do. We push away the abundance and the natural flow of the universe that always is coming to us. And we say, well, that's, you know, people go, oh, yeah, right. The universe is coming to me, and it's just delivering all these wonderful opportunities and things, at, but it never does. That's just a bunch of bunk. It's a bunch of crap. It just, that's not right. But it is. And when you start to understand that, you're the force. You're the attraction. So when you understand that, that you are pure consciousness, your pure energy that has taken on form to experience. So what happens is, is that this polarity, this opposite that you are, and the universe is coming in, and it, it, it will not come in. It will be pushed away every single time so you begin to understand that now if i know and i have the confidence through my heart mind that what i put out there that i move energy into form i know that and i am in deep gratitude i know that the universe will provide that that will come into being okay but we we have a tendency to go start tinkering with it and trying to force things and then we get in our way 
and we push the very thing we're desiring away, and it never materializes. And with the God within us, the pure consciousness, it's always, it's always doing what it can to guide us. And believe it or not, in a lot of ways, we're being guided 24-7. It's just that the ego mind has a tendency to interrupt that flow. So it becomes miscombobulated. And this is knowing this. Remember that knowledge is power. And when you understand this about yourself, you begin, this is part of our journey within us. We begin to discover that why am I constantly pushing against that which I desire. Why am I constantly trying to keep it away? It's the very thing I'm desiring. It doesn't make sense to a lot of people. But the reason is, is that we become seduced by the ego mind and we begin to have doubt. And the doubt is always constant. It, it, it is there before we know it. So as we are literally projecting or moving energy into form for us, for what we desire. The ego mind is causing you to believe through the heart mind, because it dictates to the heart mind, the emotion, that, oh, this isn't going to, what if it doesn't happen? What, 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 what are you going to do? What, what if what you're expecting doesn't come about? What are you going to do? And it's interesting because you remember that we literally 24-7 are moving energy into form. We're creating. So with that doubt coming in, what do you think's happening? When, when you're going, you, you be, then you start worrying or fearing comes in through the ego mind. Then you start saying, wow, I don't know what I'm going to do if that doesn't work. Or, or well, I don't know what I'm going to do if that doesn't happen. It could be anything. Could be anything in your existence, in your life. And we are creating the very thing that we don't desire. We're creating the very thing that's going to stop that flow, stop that energy moving into form, and we will not receive. Now, what, this is how the ego mind cannot come in. This is how you negate the ego mind without anger or anything. You simply let go, release, after you have sent your intent to the universe and the energy moving into form. You've already, that's already, in, that's already been engaged, it's a split second. You didn't say to yourself, I have no expectations and I have no attachments and I'm going with the flow. This is when we, when we give to others, when we actually give to others, when, whether it's a smile, a hug, whether it's a pat on the back, whether it's lifting something for somebody, whatever it may be, this is the same way that when we have no expectations and no attachments when we're helping others. We have no expectations when we're helping others. We aren't expecting to have something in return. We are not attached to that. We are doing it freely from our God center because the bottom line with that is is that we are helping ourselves. And that's been really skewed on this planet with this civilization forever. It becomes very skewed dark, low frequency, because of the fact that expecting something in return from yourself by assisting yourself by helping others is absolutely absurd. And this is where we get tied up and bundled up and we, we experience revenge or anger uh, or cynicism or skepticism. This is how all of these frequencies come in through the ego mind and then the ego mind dictates to the heart mind, and then the heart mind creates into reality. That's what happens through emotion. Without emotion, I'll guarantee you one thing. Without emotion, we could not move energy into form. We would not be able to. 
The mind is not capable on its own to do any of that, okay? The mind is random. It has no structure. It flails around, and the ego pumps it, fills it full of things that we don't really desire to engage with. And those things are literally the doubt, the fear, anxiety, the stress, the wonder, the wor- it just it, it's, it just accumulates and the ego loves it. It loves it because it can never be satisfied. So if you're in anger or you're in fear or you're in worry, the ego is feeding you more and more and more and more and more. This is why we attract more and more and more of it. Okay? So when we let go, the, the only reason we let go is because we love ourselves and the God within us. And we have the confidence that the God within us, through the heart-mind, is with us all the time and is guiding us. So there's really nothing to worry or fear about. It's automatic. When you eventually get there, and I'm not saying it's easy, but when each of us get there in our own time, in our own direction, we begin to realize, this is really great. I feel so much better. I feel so much lighter. I don't have all these expectations. How many times when you carry expectations about anything in your life, anything, with others, with yourself, how many times, how much, how, Uh, defeating is it for you when it doesn't happen? How emotional is it for you when it doesn't happen? How how do you feel? Do you like that feeling that you get, you know, when you're expecting something and it doesn't happen or it doesn't come to you? But you know when it comes to you? When you aren't expecting it. When you don't have expectations. When you don't have attachments. You see? A lot of the times we, we create, but we, we, when it's supposed to be let go for the universe to respond, we hang on to it, we grip it for dear life. So we want to release it, but we aren't releasing it because we're holding on to it. It can't, it cannot move into form because we aren't letting it, say. But if we're able to get to the point, and we will, when you get to that point where you're able to say, I, have, I really have no idea, and people will know that when you say it. When, a lot of times when you say it to people, it's like, oh, yeah, right, okay. And you're not delivering it from the heart mind. You're delivering it from the ego mind, so it really just bounces around. But you just, I have no expectations and no attachments. I'm going with the flow. I'm in the canoe with no oars, and I'm letting the current take me. It's effortless when you understand that. And you don't realize it, but you're the flow. You are the flow. You're going with the flow. In reality, the God within, the pure consciousness, is the flow. You have no worry, no stress, no fear, because those are all thoughts that you create into reality. So do you see how it it plugs in? And how you start to realize that all of the time in this life that you're gripping and holding and not letting go, but wanting and wanting, but not letting go, and you never receive what you are wanting because you're never letting go of it. You enjoy things, but you don't become attached to them. You... That's it, right there, because everything is free-form, free-flowing, until, as powerful as we are, we impress upon it, we hug it, we grip it, we, we, for dear life, we hold on to it, we don't let go. And this disrupts the natural full flow of abundance to each and every one of us. And we're the only ones that do it, see? We think, some of us think that it's, well, it's external, it's something. Something's not right. Something just, this shouldn't be happening. It's you. It's always you. It's never not you. See? And when we become fully, clearly aware, conscious about this, without judgment, without ridicule on ourselves, we begin to progress 
on our journey. We begin to ascend more and more. We move more into enlightenment. We hold enlightenment longer, longer each time. And we begin to realize that it is within us and our understanding that this whole, this whole construct is our doing. So once we understand that, it, it, it's, it's kind of, there, there aren't words that really depict it, but when you allow the love that you are to fully bloom outside of you, because it's in you, and you, you connect with it, and it's everywhere, you, then you understand. Maybe you've met people in your travels that you've come across, how can they just be, how are they, how can anybody be that way? They just go with the flow. They just don't seem to get irritated or disrupted about things. They just smile. And, you know, doesn't that upset you that this is this and this and that? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. I'm grateful to be here in this moment. You see the difference? Okay? Whereas normally if you want to call it normally, a lot of people will get frustrated and flustered. Wow, this is just really bugging me. Does that bug you? No, not really. Does it bug me? It's where do you where do you desire to put your frequency and energy? Where is it? Is it joy and bliss? Is it moving more into joy and bliss, or is it moving more in this material world of frustration, irritation. Yeah, you, you, you bump along and you get excited and you have this experience and that experience and that's what experience is for, but it's not outside. And when you realize that when you connect with the core being, the God that you are, the pure consciousness, the bliss and the joy, you exude that. You, you create it for yourself in the physical world. It's in your spirit world, your spiritual world, your etherical world, the God, the pure consciousness. And the journey is about merging that with this physical world so that you can experience it in the physical world, not just your etheric or your spirit world or your God. You understand what I'm saying? This is part of our understanding of bringing them together so you can live paradise, not just inside of you, but in this physical world. Because it, it, it is, you are, all of us are the paradise. And when we learn that that paradise can be brought out and expanded across this planet, Maybe now you're getting the understanding of what it means, what, what the whole reason is for the ascension, for the transition, for the civilization, for each and every one of us. It is to bring the God outside, the God, the kingdom of God within you. You begin to emanate as the God becomes one with you in physical form. So you're purely consciously aware of that. Part of this is not having expectation, not having attachments, and going with the flow, because you're flowing with the God that you are. You're the creator of all things. You always have that, but you've been taught that it's external that you don't have that power, that you are nothing. You're just a piece of flesh. You're a, you know, the, 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 they're just ridiculous statements made by the lower frequencies. You're a useless eater, you're this, you're that. It's so completely foolish, but yet it isn't because of the bicameralism of people on this planet. It, it's just, it's a different, it, it, you begin to understand it with clarity, and then you bathe it in love, is what we're here to do. And that since we are, our essence is love, doesn't it make sense that we begin, we merge the God with the 
physical and co- pure consciousness so that this so that you the paradise within you can become the paradise outside of you and you can enjoy all of it period but it's when the ego it's when we allow these things we don't a lot of us don't do it knowingly we just it's like a habit that we've been in for thousands and thousands and thousands of years and i with the frequencies of the planet and feeling how they are right now it is apparent that the civilization has literally melted through the barrier of this incessant bicameralism which was gone over 3,000 years ago and that they've been carrying that residual effect for a very long time. Isn't that amazing? So, in, in understanding, we are here to, in these bodies so that we can merge the God, the kingdom of God within, so it can shine forth across the planet with each other, with all things. Then, you will then experience what a true God planet is about. It is a sustained understanding of bliss. It is pure flow. It is uninterrupted, deep, eternal love and gratitude. It is just absolute nirvana. And we're doing that as we take one step at a time of understanding of who and what we are. So this meditation is simply put, release, release. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted, and I'm sure we all are, and the first thing that we care to do is relax our bodies. Now our bodies are also at our beck and call. We've been taught that it must be external. We have to have external things take care of our bodies. When we literally are in the body as the God, as the pure consciousness, and we can direct anything we choose without interrupting ourselves for the ego mind. So we release all of the stress. Anything that you've picked up in the last 24 hours that you may be aware of, drop the shoulders, just eliminate the, the, any stress. What is the stress? The stress is the ego mind. That's the stress. So you relax the ego mind. You basically lean into the God that you are. You ease back into the God that you are. And you just, you're a spectator. You don't participate with all this stuff. You just are flowing and you're not dipping your hand or your feet into it. You're watching it, it can pass through you. And so the body relaxes. And you become more and more aware of your body and you have a much more loving relationship with your body, gentleness and kindness. As you do this, the body will respond and will relax. As you do that, you move into the now. We're always in the now, but we just don't know it. The now is basically all we have. The past is the past. The future is not here. In the now, we create everything. In the now, in the moment. And in that now, you still the ego mind. You still the mind. You still the subconscious mind. You leave the mind alone in the now. Because all you're doing is focusing on whatever it is that you are occupied with in the now. It doesn't, you don't go into the future because you're in the now. You don't go into the past because you're in the now. So it stills the mind, the chatter, the noise. Now, a lot of us will go into the past, reminisce, embrace. And as we go into the past, Sometimes we will embrace the past, bring it into the future, create the future from our past, and relive the past in our futures. So if we look forward, we can't 
new energy cannot take form if, it, if the room is filled with old, dank energy that has already been experienced. So, in the now, we create our future. We focus on the now. And we write down the future we desire. And don't interact. Don't, don't, don't disrupt it. Don't worry. Don't expect. Don't have attachment. And just let it go to the universal awareness of existence, the pure consciousness. And it will be formed. You have already set it into motion. As long as you do not stand in the way. That's the only way it will not be received. Also, we want to breathe. And breathing is so important. Most of us shallow breathe because we take our breathing for granted. The breath is power. The breath is focus. The breath is peace and calmness. So as we breath in, visualize this. We're breathing in divine positive energy, pure energy, pure frequency of love. And so as we pull it in through the sacral chakra, which is begins the chakra, begins from that point of the groin, and as you go up through the body, you literally go through all the chakras of the center of the body. Now, our chakras are not centered, but visualize it. So as the breath is brought in, comes through the sacral chakra, up through the center of the body. As it goes through the center of the body, you pass through the heart chakra, the throat chakra, the third eye chakra, and the crown chakra. As you're doing this, you're moving it and, it, and you bring it up into the brain, the brain cavity, and as you do that, for, for a brief period, you sustain it, you hold it. I am light, I am love, I am. And as you're holding it, you compress it and condense it into pure liquid energy, frequency. And as you do that, you release it over the pineal gland. It saturates the pineal gland. And rather than the pineal gland being a prune, it begins to come alive and expand, just like a rosebud that blooms. It begins to bloom out. And we do this at least six times while I'm talking. Visualize it. It is very powerful energy. And when you condense it and compress it into liquid form and release it over the pineal gland, the pineal gland will begin to intensify and it will begin to expand. And understand that your pineal gland is the gateway to all the particles of existence. It's also the gateway to pure consciousness. It's also the gateway to beyond consciousness and to all existence. So it's important. It's important. So visualize that. Also, we know that the ego mind is is there as we do this. So as we exhale, as we move the air out and back up around. The ego mind is there trying to pull you away from it, trying to get you in your own way, trying to stop the natural state of our being. So we work and we operate through the heart-mind, which is much more powerful than the ego mind. And in the heart-mind, we literally communicate with our God, with our pure consciousness. So we have the body, the heart-mind, and the God. And we are one. And we have others with us. We have the archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, and the archetype. All of them, they've been with us since the beginning. They're a civilization that vibrates at a higher frequency than we do, so that's why we do not see them like we see each other. They are consciously aware that they are of the highest, deepest, eternal love from the highest, deepest, eternal love, 
and the highest and deepest eternal gratitude. And they visit us. They can, they will come in humanoid form. If we're conscious and we're aware of the God within us, we will normally when they're gone after they have given you a message that they they walk out the door or whatever, it, it, it then comes over you. That was great. That was an angel giving me a message. And the messages are always very, very wonderful. They're not doom and gloom and negativity. Now understand that the angels are part of us and we're part of them. We're not separated. We are part of the collective consciousness of all existence. All of us are. And you can have as many as 50 to 60,000 of them surround you at any one time because of their vibrational frequency many can take up a small amount of space and talk about blissful now we also have with us the ascended masters Kuan Yin Maitreya Buddha Lakshmi Ganesh Gaia Saint Germain Sananda Jesus El Moria, Abedantia, Pell, Thoth, many, many, many more. And an ascended master is one who has experienced and perfected their understanding of who and what they are. So they no, no longer really need to to contain themselves within a physical form. They maintain God form, which is pure consciousness. And they assist us every single day. And they are consciously aware that they are of the highest, deepest eternal love and from the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest of deepest eternal gratitude. We ascend into physical form to experience physical form. This is all about experience, all of us, every one of us. It is our God experiencing different forms. That's what it is. And it's magnificent. Every step of the way. So we're all, and we're all here. We're consciously aware that we're of the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest, deepest eternal gratitude. So all of us come together in this now, in this meditation, and we form the circle of light. It is the God that we are that is the light. It is the pure consciousness at the highest of highest high vibrational frequencies of deep eternal love and gratitude. This light is so brilliant that it grays out the darkness of space. Space is the opportunity for the light to expand. You cannot see this light on Earth in the physical world. It cannot be duplicated other than by our pure consciousness, our pure God. So we form it, and it's a halo, and it's literally around the equator of this planet Earth. It's illuminating the entire planet brilliantly. So as we come together, arm in arm, hand in hand, so to speak, we then begin to levitate above the planet. We start to move up in this circle of light. And as it moves up, we come into a gossamer field. We've created this gossamer field, along with the angels, along with the ascended masters, along with all existence and all consciousness. And this field is gossamer reflecting brilliant, vibrant colors everywhere. And we see that Archangel Raphael is carrying the emerald green flaming healing light and this is a column that reminds us that we're the power of healing. We will eventually understand what this means. 
we have the violet blue purple flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is the column that reminds us of our power, our strength, our resolve. We have the white fire. The white fire is our armor. It's our sustainment of the higher frequencies of deep eternal love and gratitude and bliss and joy and peace and tranquility and benevolence. Gentleness, generosity, humbleness, kindness. And we maintain that. We choose. Each of us choose. There's nothing external that can drop our armor with the exception of us. And if we lower our vibrational frequencies low enough, where we become angry, where we become hurried, where we become frustrated, where we have attachment, where we have expectations, it'll lower enough where the lower survival matter frequencies, lower dark matter frequencies will come in. We have the purple transmuting flame. This is a column that reminds us that if we do do that with ourselves, we can bring in the purple transmuting flame and we literally can transmute these low frequencies into neutralized substance and then we can send them back to pure consciousness. What do you think the great central sun is? Pure consciousness. And we send them back. They're repurposed. They're reabsorbed into nothing. Then we have the violet ray. We're reminded of that column that we can bring in the violet ray and we can cleanse and purify the area where the lower frequencies were, thereby lifting our frequency to the highest high of deepest eternal love and gratitude. Then balancing our frequency, restoring our armor, and we continue to ascend. We have the golden white pink light. This is the vibrational frequency of the love that we are, the gratitude that we are, the bliss and the joy that we are. And this golden white pink light is with us eternally because we are the golden white pink light. So, as we continue to ascend, to levitate, we see this massive column that we created, and it's larger than the solar system, and we look at the top, and it's like a golden ocean, 360 degrees, flowing down over everything, over all life, the highest values in the universe. And as we witness this, it in turn is flooding us. And each of us contain, we are the drops of the golden ocean coming from that column. And we contain the essence of the entire golden ocean, each of us. So those of us carrying physical form step out of our bodies. And we, as we do, we float effortlessly above our bodies and we immediately call out, to all of the light energy beings that are in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And only those who are of the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest, deepest eternal gratitude and are consciously aware of this can join us in this meditation and this now in the circle of light. They're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, and benevolence, and they come, and they come in the Googaplexes. The Googaplex will fill this universe. They come in the trillions of Googaplexes from every direction. Arm in arm, hand in hand, their gods with our gods, our gods with theirs, they are with us in this now, in this meditation, in this circle of light. They are of the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest of deepest eternal love. We are of the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest of deepest eternal love. And we are the one. And we are the love. 
and we are the God. And our God light energy is absolutely everywhere and it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. We call upon all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, beneath earth, Agartha, many, many, many civilizations, only those who are consciously aware that they are the highest, deepest, eternal love from the highest, deepest, eternal love and the highest, the deepest, eternal gratitude can join us in this now, in this meditation, in this circle of light. They're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, and benevolence. And they come, they come in the billions, arm in arm, hand in hand, their gods with our gods, our gods with theirs. They are with us in this now, in this meditation, in this circle of light. They are of the highest, of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude, and the highest, of deepest eternal love. We are of the highest, of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude, and the highest, of deepest eternal love. And we are the one, we are the love, and we are the God. And our God light energy is absolutely everywhere, and it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. We call upon all the galactics, all the off-worlders, many, many, many civilizations, just to name a few that we are familiar with. The Pleiadians, the Arcturians, the Andromedans, the Syrians, the Feline, the Avion, the Pyramids, many, many, many more. And only those who are consciously aware that they are of the highest, deepest, eternal love, from the highest, deepest, eternal love, and the highest, of deepest, eternal gratitude, can join us in this now, in this meditation, in this circle of light, that they are consciously aware. They're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, and benevolence. And they come in the billions, arm in arm, hand in hand, their gods with our gods, our gods with theirs. They have assisted us in our evolution, in our ascension, in our enlightenment freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. They are with us in this now, in this meditation, this circle of light. They are of the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest of deepest eternal love. We are of the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest of deepest eternal love. And we are the one. We are the love, and we are the God, and our God light energy is absolutely everywhere, and it continues to intensify, and it continues to expand. We call upon all of our loved ones, all of those who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we have inhabited, only those who are consciously aware that they are of the highest, of the deepest eternal love, and from the highest of the deepest eternal love and the highest of deepest eternal gratitude can join us in this now, in this meditation, in this circle of light. And that they are consciously aware. They're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, and benevolence, and they come arm in arm, hand in hand, their gods with our gods, our gods with theirs. They are of the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest of deepest eternal love. We are of the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest of deepest eternal love. And we are the one, we are the God, and we are the love. And our God light energy is absolutely everywhere and it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. 
we call upon all of the light energy beings who have decided to be housed in the following forms on and above and below this planet Earth Gaia and this now and this meditation and this circle of light. Only those who are consciously aware that they are of the highest, deepest, eternal love from the highest, deepest, eternal love and the highest, deepest, eternal gratitude can join us in this now, in this circle of light, in this meditation. Just to name a few of them, the fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves, the trees, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the unicorn, the pegasus, the centaur, the minotaur, many, many, many more. They're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, and they come in the billions, in the trillions, arm in arm, hand in hand, their gods with our gods, our gods with theirs, they are with us in this now, in this meditation, in this circle of light. And we are the one, we are the God, we are the love. They are of the highest and deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude. We are of the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest of deepest eternal love. And our God light energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever, and it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. We look up and we see our meditative sphere. We created this sphere over two years ago. It said center circle. It houses all of our meditations in perpetual motion. Over 800 meditations and growing every single day. It is of the highest, of the purest, of the deepest eternal love and gratitude, of joy, of bliss, of peace, of tranquility, of benevolence, of gentleness, of kindness, of generosity, and humbleness. This, one, this is why this fear can be seen, heard, and felt, and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond, and forever. It bathes all of us, both our etheric bodies and our biological bodies, inside and out, head to toe, in the highest of highest high frequencies. It is pure bliss. It communicates with us nonstop. And it, it, it gives us the understanding of the communication to release, to just release. We are already perfection. We're already divine. There is nothing that we cannot create. So we release, we let go of all of the material attachments all the expectations and we flow with the gods that we are with ease with gentleness with generosity with kindness with humbleness in bliss and joy and peace and tranquility and benevolence We look down upon this planet Earth, Gaia. All of our brothers and sisters.
creatures, all life, on and above and below, in this now, in this meditation, this circle of life. Life, the highest value in the universe. As we are, they are. As we lift ourselves, we lift them. All of those who may be asleep, all of those who are just waking up, all of those that are rubbing their eyes and for the first time discovering the gods that they are. And they too are beginning to release, to let go, to embrace the gods that they are, the perfection, the power. We are the power of creation. We will continue to create. We will continue to transform this planet into the God planet and into the paradise. We will bring our paradise, our heaven, and it will spill forth across the planet Earth. In complete, deep, eternal love and harmony, in peace and joy and prosperity for every single one of us. I join in meditation and I'll return to close us out.
with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night the following morning. You harmonize with the frequencies that you are and it'll vibrate to deep truth of releasing, letting go. Without expectations, without attachments. And flow as the true gods each and every one of us are. We'll be back here Monday, May 11th, 2020, 3 p.m. Eastern to continue our Global Guided Meditation call. We will have, uh, this next coming week, of course, we will have the TFCC. Uh, we will also have a uh, group call on the Tradera call line 